So, stack it up. Common frustrations and solutions in SOC teams today. My name is Jimitson Kondu. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, Kondu2. Uh, mostly used for following, reposting. I don't really post a lot. Uh, got a lot of content, so I'll get started straight into that. Uh, bit of a preamble into myself. Um, got a unique name, so it's very easy to find stuff about me online. Um, please don't. Uh, currently doing all things blue team for a cloud computing and hosting company. Um, fun fact, recently back from Sands Amsterdam, facilitating there. That was good fun. Shout out to Taz and Eva. And my background is one of open source software, full stack software support engineering um, with the likes of Zimbra, Logarithm, not so open source, and then over to Elastic. Um, but there's been heaps of cybersecurity along the way. I've done, I joined the security team over at Zimbra, responding to vulnerability reports and internal testing, all things seem at Logarithm and Elastic supporting logging as well as security analytics folks. Anyways, here I am, and I'm here to tell you that I'm just not that impressed. I'm someone that likes to find areas of improvement um, and put those forward, not to complain, but to exactly improve, improve, uh, improve the team, improve the tooling, um, and just what we do day to day so it doesn't become so mundane and boring. Um, so I'm going to be going over some common frustrations. I've got a, a fair few frustrations and uh, a bit of a cohesion of solutions at the end, a bit quite short at the end. I've got a lot of content. Um, but over the, last, over the last six months, I've been talking to friends, peers, even interviewees, and even a few instant response folks at SANS to find out what, are, what have they seen, what are they frustrated with within their SOC teams or where they've worked or contracted. And... You know, alert fatigue, old technology, and budget constraints have been sort of the top tail end there. Is it too early for cat pictures? I'll get started. So, uh, PSA, um, by no means is, is this a depiction of the SOC team that I work in right now. And if your SOC or your, your CERT team have any one or many of these it's not a problem as long as it's it's a thought process. It's something that's a work in progress, and there's some priorities aligned to these. At the same time, I can't possibly go through everything today. If you think there's one or two particulars that I really did miss out on, please do at mention me um, on Twitter. But I'm more active on LinkedIn. Happy to have a conversation always. So this is the layout I'm going to follow is the frustration. What it is? What does it mean for the SOC or the analyst? Um, and I'm going to start with legacy technology, not um, alert fatigue. Legacy technology being tooling or an application that was created X amount of years ago inside the organization, and it's a part of the day-to-day -day processes. Um, for example, an asset management, asset management tool that you've got to log into. It's got a pretty slow UI. It could be based <laughs> in another region, and it's got a bit of a slow search. So that's it's something else you've got to log into. You've got to have another tab open. And it could be something that potentially needs to fall under the SSO of the, uh, the internal security. Alert fatigue. Are you inundated with alerts? I mean, literally thousands of alerts, um, heaps of false positives. Um, they could be low level, high quantity. They could be high severity level, high quantity. And with that comes a potential for a lack of enrichment. What that means for the SOC and analyst is less downtime to do research and development. Uh, automation of tasks as well as tooling. You could have particular analysts that are passionate for an area. They might want to learn some Python or scripting and they can't do that because they're just so inundated. Uh, you have a higher churn of analysts and that's expensive for an, for an organization. We're mistake prone. Uh, wanting to keep up with, keep up with alerts. Let's say a particular analyst really likes phishing. They're following a phishing campaign or they're filling a following along with a particular APT. So they're, they're having to do that as well as keep up to date or keep on top of all of their day-to-day -day alerts. And this, this actually, this could be, there's two things that, that it, could, it could be a sign of is perhaps some of those alerts need suppressing or probably aggregating, but I feel that's more of a architecture or uh, engineering side of things, not so much SOC, depending on how the teams are set up. And the other thing is, perhaps you need to onboard more analysts to load balance the number of alerts. You can't get alert fatigue if you just don't check the alerts, right? That's a fact. 
All right, on to lack of enrichment. Okay, you've got a. Uh, I'll set the set the, uh, set the site here. Is you've got a malware alert. You've got the IPs. You've, you've got the ports. You've got a hash. That's great. It's a good start, but nothing else. And then we're talking about a yet another application. You've got to log into another tab. You've got to have open, and there's a chance of being more mistake prone. Another example being not being able to ingest DNS or full packet capture into your single pane of glass due to sizing issues or costs. We've all heard of this before. Perhaps you can, but for a shorter retention period. What this means for the SOC and or analysts is, especially for the first example, is a slower mean time to detect and a slower mean time to respond. Yet another application. Heaps more tabs. And that's just slowing down, using so much RAM. Um, and on the, on the other example of DNS and full packet capture, you're missing out on that pre-attack. If we're talking mitre attack framework, that pre-attack stage, that reconnaissance, you're not getting those initial IOCs to see how they're scanning, how they're going to think about actually moving across there. On to outdated equipment and budget constraints. I'm going to couple some of these up as I go along. So you've started a new role. You've been given a managed machine that's three years old, and it's got a bit of a flickering screen. If you're working with a US or a UK keyboard layout, and you've got an alert for a DGA domain, it's got funky European characters in there, and you've got to squint or you've got to really work it out, the equipment doesn't really help the speed of that, working through the alert, working through those, through those cases. It'd be nice for all of us to have, you know, juicy brand new machines, 16 gigabytes to crack on with sandboxing, reproducing reports, for example. What this means is immediately coming in, being given an old machine, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I've put an X next to this company already. They've given me old, old machines. I can't, I can't work as efficiently as I can. Budget constraints means not the latest tools, not the latest EDR, all that cool stuff that everyone out there is using, and not the latest training. And the goal is to keep all the analysts happy. You keep them happy, they keep the sock churning along. Next, inexperienced peers and tribal knowledge. Some SOCs or certs may have a te tearing of analysts, uh, level one, two, three, four. Four being the Yodas, the SMEs of a particular area, malware analysis, reverse engineering, forensics, or even seam aficionados. And it's not nice to hear, but sometimes... With, with newer folks, uh, the older folks may say, hey, that new guy didn't follow our SOP or that run book. They've, they've missed something. And it's just not nice to hear. Um, they're, all, they're always asking questions or making mistakes. This slows down the team, slows down case management, and uh, slowing down the SOC, uh, those high number of alerts uh, that we're talking about. Questions, I think, in my own opinion, and I'll, I'll, I've mentioned it at the end, is great. That's how we all started, and that's how we got to where we are. And then tribal knowledge. Shmi, right? So tribal knowledge of those Shmi's, um, they want to be the super saiyan experts of those particular areas. They could have an ego. We've always all come across someone with an ego, or we've also come across folks that are just so willing to share. Amazing folks. Um, but those knowledge hoarders sitting on forums or Twitter like, yes, I've seen that SHA hash before, that's APT18. Um, they know how to unpack all the malwares. They know all, all the only debug shortcuts. Um, tribal knowledge. An another piece to that is they could just be geographically or not available in that time zone to disseminate knowledge with the junior engineers. Um, and I feel this holds back junior analysts from learning. It creates a culture of not sharing uh, culture as well as in the workspace. No one starts sharing knowledge. The, even if a junior analyst goes away and learns something, they don't feel that they, they're in an environment to share that even wider. Inadvertently slowing down the growth and strength of the SOC team. On to the next. Lack of automation, lack of using the latest methodologies, and a lack of tooling. I'm going to set the scene here. You've got, you've got one tab where your, your seam is and your alerts have come in. You've got another tab of case management. You've got another for your run books where you've got your instant response steps. And it's all very compartmentalized. You're having to log into so many, yet another application. So and you're just, you're very prone to making mistakes. All of that could be all automated. Save yourself 15 to 30 minutes of alert or case time. 
And then onto you not using the latest methodologies, methodologies. Let's say you're not using the latest cloud technologies, container security or technologies, perhaps not even machine learning yet. Uh, have you thought about a zero trust model? Also tying this in with budget constraints is are you using the latest IDS, NSM, EDR, DDoS mitigation tools? What this means for the SOC and or analysts is they're having to put a lot more time and effort into their day-to-day -day work without having that automation there. They're inundated with alerts. It's just, it just piles on. It's not that great. And for analysts, they don't just don't get an, that much exposure into the latest tooling. Uh, then they might personally feel that they're not employable if they were to leave that employer at that time. They're not just, they're not working on all things cloud, all things cloud, all things sec devops that we hear nowadays. On to the next. This is one of my own personal, not personal, but one I feel close towards is a lack of communication, cohesion, uh, lack of threat intelligence, and a lack of purple teaming. Uh, you've got your red team running their hunts, their normal operations. Uh, sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't tell you that they're running a, uh, a hunt. They might give you an IP address or an SSO user, so you, you know that if you see that in your in your seam, you know what to look for. That's false positive. That's cool. Your blue team running business as usual, um, but all of this there's a lack of cohesion, communication, and for me, and I put this in there most importantly is collaboration. I, I've seen uh, something in the last twelve months where there's been uh, IOCs in the wild three days prior, and there was no threat intelligence or a red team or any of that bought into case managements. Um, and then we saw scanning and a potential pre-exploit due to that. But if, if we had that threat intelligence already, whether it's by a threat intelligence team, by a red team, or even a proactive blue teamer, to go in there, grab those IOCs, put those in a case, you're, you're one step ahead. You, you want to find the vulnerabilities before others do. All right, quick cat break. I think we're okay now. This is a nine weeks old kitten named Zeus that my, uh, my mom's babysitting. I'm very, uh, I'm adorned in a lot of cat stuff today. Techies love cats. Okay, I'm gonna go into common solutions. I'll sort of pair these up and, um, give them the time. Legacy tech, use those pain areas to drive budget. Um, okay, it's fine. You're using legacy technology. If you've got uh, an old asset management tool that you've got to log into, it's cool, but, Make it work for you. Make it drive the budget. Um, and start, perhaps even start looking and talking about a zero trust model inside of the, the SOC or organization. Alert fatigue. Automate. Make more time. Hire more analysts. Get management into the trenches, talking with the analysts. Find out what the analysts like, love, what they're passionate for, and uh, where they want to grow in. Enrichment or a lack thereof. It's not too hard. It's, you know, there's heaps of open source technology out there to, if you want to spin up a VPC and try out a new cool OSINT technology or a feed and just POC it. Talk, talk to your folks in the SOC saying, Hey, I did this in my spare time. I want to bring this into the SOC. Um, because you're so inundated with alerts, you're going, you have, you're having to use time outside of work. And if you're working 10, 12 hour shift rotations, it's not that easy. So be proactive. Old equipment and budgets, use those pain areas for budget. You'd rather pay £50,000 pre-breach for a tool or technology or for analysts uh, than 500 k plus post. Next, to do with the junior peers and the tribal knowledge. Teach, grow, learn. God damn it. I, as in, you've got to disseminate that knowledge. How else will the juniors learn? Or how will they become seniors one day? Automation is awesome. Automation means efficiency. Uh, take, take an analyst out of a uh, rotor for one day, let them go learn a new tool, get, get them automating something, um, automating case management so you don't waste 15 minutes, copy, paste, here to their case, close. Save time. Efficiency. Perhaps even R&D into machine learning for faster detection and response, giving the SOC more time to do all the good stuff, faster response. Purple teaming. I think I'm going to do a talk about this next. Um, there's, there's so much there. Just collaborate and aim for greatness. Get, get the, get the red and blue team sitting together. Give them feedback. The, the red team run a hunt or whatever they do. Have a five minute, 10 minute Zoom call, Slack, send them over some documentation. This is what we found. These are the IOCs. Do it. 
aim for greatness. Over communicate. I've uh, I've worked remote previously, and over communication and collaboration is a good thing. Uh, you're better over communicating than not. Um, in short, everyone's on the same page locally, regionally, geographically. So not that someone wakes up in EMEA or APAC one day saying, oh, by the way, we're, we're replacing our seam and you just found out about it on the day. Not cool. Communicate. Um, and yeah, less e ego, more EQ, more empathy, more whiteboarding, more sharing knowledge. Have patience. Teach. Um, I like to disseminate knowledge as much as I can. I'm not that great. I'm still learning. But it's a cool thing uh, because... If you share the knowledge, you feel you like you really feel that you really do know it. So yeah, don't be shy. Share the love, and thank you very much. That's my Twitter. <laughs>